this little waterfall in here is going to be exceptional. A lot of times my favorite waterfalls necessarily aren't the tallest waterfalls. They're just the ones that have some movement. And so we're going to get a little bit of water moving through here, then through here, and then all drop into what looks like a natural little cove. This rock was naturally formed this way, so it dropping down into here will look really cool. If I were to say one thing I could leave you guys with is always put more liner than you think. And I thought I did that. <laughs> What's that look for? <laughs> A famous man once said, if it looks good dry, it's definitely gonna look good wet. This water feature is so fantastic here as opposed to anywhere else on the property is if it was anywhere else on this enormous backyard, it would probably feel very, very small. But since we put it right here, it actually feels much larger than it is. We have successfully incorporated a new aquascape water feature into already a beautiful existing outdoor living space. That is a wrap. Super excited about this project. This is actually the son to a, a customer we just did less than two weeks ago. So really cool that we're already out here. I was hoping we could sneak them in before we start some really large projects. So this is what's gonna be probably a day and a half project. We might get the opportunity to get it all done in a day. But the way things are moving now, with Stone being here early in the morning, sod cutter already out, the machine back here, you can definitely tell we're ready to go. It's gonna be a hot one with 95% humidity and we're gonna we're gonna try to rock and roll through this pondless waterfall. Let me turn this around and kind of walk you through the design. So a challenging yard really with where to put the pond. And all of you guys know I like to design from inside the house. The biggest challenge is these windows here, which would be the main windows looking out. You can't even see this space because you're up so high. So your eyes really fall more back in here. And putting a pond back in here might make sense a little later when the, his kids get a little older, but it would take up a lot of real estate. And the patio and entertainment space is all up in here. So they were originally thinking kind of in this space. I said, well, why don't we look at this space over here? And it's really cool. They've got this upper deck with a fire pit on here, and then this lower patio with one of the fireplace and then a fire pit. So what's kind of cool is we've got the best of both worlds. And like always, we got a slope we can work with. We can do some pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna start this whole project with a urn that sits up in there, which is then visible from those doors looking out and through. So they still get to see something when we light that up, it'll look incredible. That's going to be the headwaters through a stream that twists and turns and then comes right down through this wall. So we're going to disassemble the wall from here all the way over and probably about there. So we got to pop up all these stepping stones, save them, put them off to the side, cut out all this grass, move this wall, get enough real estate for a reservoir to go in. And then, and then we have to put this back with a bridge that comes in. One of the things I was excited about going over to Illinois Brick, I found these stones, which are just bigger weathered limestone outcroppings, but they're so perfect for doing cool bridges. They're a little craggy on the top, but almost every single time if they're craggy on the top, they're really flat on the bottom. So we probably get lucky, find one of these guys, flip it over, and it'll be a perfect bridge. Got some really cool mosses and lichens all over these guys. Some big stone for a small project, but it'll look awesome when it's finished. Yeah, Hanson! <laughs> It's called orange steel, ginger steel right there. Ginger steel, or whatever the hardest metal on earth is. So, outcropping wall that Brian talked about earlier in the video is now ripped apart basically to where we want it to be. That's where we're gonna incorporate our waterfalls in, so that wall will end up sweeping back that way, and then we'll pick back up again on the outside once we get our waterfalls built. Ton of base material in here, which is always awesome to see that other landscapers do it well. So they did a great job. We're actually gonna use a lot of that stuff for up there on our step over there coming down from the deck. So, Brian's gonna continue digging this back, we'll get our reservoir in, and all that good stuff so keep moving and you can see big red probably is reaches time limit on the machine so we have all of our blocks in that's where our pumps obviously sit or pump in this case single pump so that's all going to get pumped up to there brian's starting to bring some rocks back we got that step set this morning a little bit more base material for a little bit of a patio area and then now that we got this and we can start setting rocks down here we have an overflow let me show you 
right here. This actually comes from all the downspouts. So we are gonna tie this into the feature so that all that rainwater gets harvested into these blocks. And now that we can start setting rocks on here, we'll get a few in, start excavating this back, put our liner in, get our urns up there, and we are gonna be rocking and rolling here shortly. First nice, truck, right? yeah. it. not quite the biggest <laughs> one, but yeah, we're going. Actually, that might be one of the bigger ones. Don't miss. <laughs> okay, it is the end of day one out here on this rehab project. You could tell by my hair, I got caught in the stump grinder today, so that's why I look like this. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you our beautiful progress. We've got four tons of stone set through here, but we've got a lot of the retaining wall work that was existing redone. We've put maybe one more chunk going back that way just to hold back some of that soil. Stream of waterfalls is almost done. We're gonna have one more little drop back there, and then that's our upper pool. That's where those urns are gonna go. Be a really, really neat effect. We gotta get a couple more, maybe one big massive wing wall out here, like a big chunk, and then all that dirt's gonna feather down. We've got our bridgestone in, which is where the orange bucket on the right hand side is. So that's gonna be a really neat bridge. And then I really love the way this waterfalls right here turned out. We ended up stacking a couple pieces of stone in order to get to that elevation, which you won't see because there'll be so much water coming through there. But I love this big flat stone. It'll look like a piece of bedrock and that that water is traveling over. So really, really cool effect. And it looks like the boulders are carved around it. So just really cool, really happy with how that turned out. We've got a neat little waterfalls here with two rocks, kind of a pitcher style falls. It's all covered up underneath the liners. That is incredible. The biggest challenge of the day was the stump, which we actually made light work out of. We went to the local rental company and rented a stump grinder for a couple hours. Between Nick and myself, we made pretty light work of it. So we're gonna be back tomorrow and we'll keep going. Okay, Nick's already getting after it this morning. So are the rest of the boys. They just got here. We are going to finish today. Here's where we left off. So good starting point today and everybody's looking to get going, right? Right, sir. Right. Got a couple of retaining stones in here. We finished off our limestone dry stack wall. We might bring one more stone in there and that'll kind of depend on how grade falls down. The bridge is officially in. We're starting to make our transition. So that might be a gravel bed, but we'll, hopefully we're bringing soil up to it. So we finished off our limestone dry stack wall. That ties right into the pond list here. Finished off a couple of our edges here. Some of our edges on this side, our plumbing is ran up to there. So by the time that Chris is done digging that upper pool where our two urns are gonna sit, we can just dump that pipe right in, manifold, do all of our ball valves and stuff up there. Juan is just helping kind of cut out the edge around the upper pooling area and then we got a couple guys running soil. So wheelbarrows for us are usually the fastest way to run soil because we have one dingo and we have four or five wheelbarrows. So if we can get that many guys running wheelbarrows, this will be dug in no time and we won't have to worry about any extra soil. So once that's all done, we can get our second overlap in and that will be our upper pooling area. Just got back out to the job site. The guys have been here for a couple hours just going ahead and getting things done. I'm super impressed on the way it's all turning out. So easily finished today. We obviously ran into some problems yesterday, hitting stumps and that kind of stuff, which threw us off our schedule. But now we've got a whole extra day out here just to focus on details. And so we're changing things up a little bit. So let me turn this around and show you what we're talking about. I'm loving the way all of this is coming together. We've got a really cool bridge stone right here. We found some outcropping ledge rock type stuff from out of weathered limestone that looks so much better than just using flat stuff like this. Really makes it look like the water just kind of eroded away the earth, leaving back behind the stones it couldn't move. So I think this waterfall is going to be exceptional the way it just kind of comes over that solid rock rather than seeing gravel the whole way. Typically what we do is boulders on the side and then gravel in our stream bed and to see a solid rock as the stream bed is going to look amazing. This little waterfall in here is going to be exceptional. A lot of times my favorite waterfalls necessarily aren't the tallest waterfalls. They're just the ones that have some movement. Movement. And so we're gonna get a little bit of water moving through here, then through here, and then I'll drop into what looks like a natural little cove. This rock was naturally formed this way, so it dropping down into here will look really cool. And then like always, our liner's a little short, not quite as wide as we wanted it. I'll take 100% of the blame of that, but they're just seaming this on back in here. <laughs> Doing a seam, we got a four inch seam going down and then a six inch seam over the top of that. That'll give us a little bit more real estate for the splash that's gonna come off of these two different urns. So, Let's see how crooked Nick can get this. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we've done seams a lot, kind of a common thing for us. We try to avoid it whenever possible. If I were to say one thing I could leave you guys with is always put more liner than you think. And I thought I did that. <laughs> What's that look for? <laughs> I thought you did too. You'd think 25 feet of liner would have been enough, but it gets sucked up quick. So things are coming together. I think we'll have this thing running probably just a little bit after lunchtime. It's gonna be exceptional. So, what Micho and Juan are working on right now is plumbing up the two stack slate urns. So you saw them, saw Micho using a three inch hole saw bit. That is to get our two inch plumbing ran up underneath the urn. And then we're gonna put an elbow connected to a piece of this rigid two inch pipe behind me. And that's gonna be our stand pipe that goes all the way up through and pushes up through the hole that they cored out right here. So we're gonna have a three way manifold somewhere back in here. We've got a bulkhead fitting in the liner right there. That's where the pipe's gonna come in. We're gonna attach flex PVC to that, snake around this way with our three respective lines. We're gonna have one two inch line going to each of the stack slate urns. And then we're gonna have a third one to fill our upper pool. Cause we only need a thousand gallons or less per urn to pull off the visual effect that we're looking for. The remainder of that water is going to be going straight into that upper pooling area, starting off the waterfall, giving the illusion that the two urns are the headwaters for the stream and generating all that water that's gonna be ripping down through that really, really awesome line limestone waterfall. Okay, so as you can see, Matt is over there burying the last of the low voltage cable along with the other Matt. Corey's over here just kind of cleaning up some of the edges. Micho and Juan just power washed everything. We are literally seconds away from turning it on. But just to give you a kind of a pan of what it looks like dry so that you can have an understanding of what it's gonna look like wet. A famous man once said, if it looks good dry, it's definitely gonna look good wet. I think it was your grandfather. <laughs> Yep, he was a wise man. By that number, would indicate that the pump is on. You can hear the water. If I just went like this, maybe show him the waterfall. It's like, oh, look at that rock. Look how beautiful that rock looks dry. What do you think, Nick? Turned out awesome, man. For such a blank canvas when we originally started, it really transformed into something that I didn't even see coming, which is not all that rare, but <laughs> no, it turned out really awesome. And we only used probably 10 tons. I think less than that, I think about eight tons of stone. Eight tons of stone. So for six pallets, basically a stone, that is pretty unbelievable actually. Well, folks, that is a wrap. I would say we have successfully incorporated a new aquascape water feature into already a beautiful existing outdoor living space, making it look as if it has always been here and they created this beautiful space behind me centered around this water feature. We couldn't have picked a better spot for the water feature. It really, really pulls this space to its fullest potential, creating hours and hours of enjoyment from not only this lower patio area, the upper deck area, and also creates curb appeal from people driving up the driveway coming up to the house. The boys did a fantastic job pulling you down through a stepper pathway across the bridge creating the interactivity that we're always asking for. Continuing it down here emptying you out into this gorgeous large lawn. Another thing that I want to bring up is the reason that this water feature is so fantastic here as opposed to anywhere else on the property is if it was anywhere else on this enormous backyard it would probably feel very very small. But since we put it right here, it actually feels much larger than it is. Remember, it's only six small aqua blocks and about seven and a half to eight tons of stone in through here. So here it looks like it fits totally to scale with this area out there. It would totally get lost. So we would have needed to make a much, much bigger water feature to have the same impact as right here, which maybe they'll do. After living with this for a little bit, it's very common that our customers end up enlarging the water feature or adding to it, or in fact, creating a whole new one, adding 
adding to their water feature addiction. Beautiful stream right here. I love how the bridge goes over. I love this bedrock waterfall in through here. There are 10 one watt lights on this. We've lit up the top of the urns. We've shined on the urns. We've got lights in the stream, underneath the bridge, underneath the waterfalls. Turned out incredible. I love the movement of these rocks right here. Just look how the water pools up underneath the urns, swells up into here. This acts as the headwaters of the whole stream and then it quick dog legs to the right, then back to the left, disappears underneath the bridge and then squirts out down here to that beautiful bottom waterfall. I would say we nailed it. I hope you guys agree. If you do or if you don't, let us know in the comments section below. Until then, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, again, comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the little bell so you can stay up to date with all the cool stuff that Team Aquascape is coming out with every Tuesday and Thursday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Until next time, I'm signing out.